Hi everyone and welcome to Rage Print. I'm Andy and this is the start of a new series where we're going to build this. And if that iconic sounding giveaway, I'm sure the thumbnail and the title of the video would have. That's right, we're going to build a 3D printed proton pack and particle thrower, neutrona wand. Um, these files are available for free off the Git on GitHub and also through 3D printed Ghostbusters on Facebook. Um, while the files are free, the instructions are not. They're available through Etsy and they cost £10. Um, so with that, because I don't want to undercut uh, Quentin's the pack designer, uh, Quentin's revenue, I'm not going to do step by step. I'm going to do along the lines of I put the cyclotron together, I put the bumper on, I put the arm on, I bolted it together. I'm not going to show you how I bolted it together, although it is fairly obvious once you printed the STLs. Um, but I will be showing you how I've done the electronics because the electronics are an open source. I'm not using Ninja Tunes or anything like that. Um, so I'll be using the uh, an open source ones I found on GitHub again building using that as a base. I've got plenty of spare parts in here to build my own set. So that's what I'm going to do. Quite happy to show that step by step if you really want to watch me soldering. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's get on. Okay, so these are the first pieces I'm going to stick together. This is the synchronous generator and it's pieces one to seven. Please don't ask me which one's one to seven, I forgot to label them. But anyway, they all just uh, screw together, uh, and if they were printed around for the most part. So we just need cleaning up around the edges here. Just screw them together. And, uh, that's the first bit ready to go. So I'll get on with that, and I'll come back to you when I'm done. Right. So oh, the table is a bad idea. Right. So I've got the synchrotron generator together. Um, really easy to put together, it's quite quick actually. Uh, the only thing I have noticed is I've also had a bit of bed warp in here. So I'll be filling that in because that's going to be noticeable. Because uh, the cyclotron is sort of there. So that'll be filling in. I mean, all these gaps are going to be filling anyway. Um, there's a screw through there, screw later for there for the clip hard. Um, it's not giving too much away really because I'd obviously I said I don't want to give away how it's put together. Um, the issue I did have is can you see here there's a screw there um, that goes into here. Now that's supposed to be a, uh, an M3, okay? Uh, but the print um, started breaking away, the walls for the, the screw hole started breaking away as I was putting the M3 through. Um, so I had to drill it out and ended up putting in an M. No, sorry, I had to drill the hole out on here because the hole here is already through. I ended up putting an M5 in through here, so there's an M5 screw in through there. It's glued anyway. Um, so yeah, that's all. That's all glued together. That's all glued together. Uh, the next bit. Well, actually, this isn't the next bit, but I know you're going to want to see what it looks like. So uh, there we go. So yeah, looking good, isn't it? And these bits, I mean, um, this is the magic of uh, Quentin's files. Is in, this is all printed in one piece. It's still printed in one piece. No, that was the only support. So that's the only support. That's it. Everything else is just a sacrificial layer here. You know, the stringy bit to then create the upper layers on top. And the same again, all this is printed with no support. Mostly I printed it upside down. Um, the only thing I did do supports on was this. And in retrospect, I probably should have printed that the other way around. Um, yeah, I mean, no, no supports. That's just really clever. So the next bit is the, um, oh, what do they call it? See, I don't know a lot of the names because I know there's different names from you know, like when I was a kid. And, you know, this is always the banjo. Didn't have a proper name. Um, yeah, it's the shell cover. So actually it's the bits that go here. Um, like the rest of the boxes go around here and then this all fits onto a motherboard eventually so 
the next bit will be me putting this bit together and I think at some point they screw together. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased that, that that was quite that was quite easy to do. So, so the next step is these bits. Um, they are called uh, center covers, uh, so they go just above the cyclotron and synchrotron generator. Um, essentially, they just make it the middle part of the pack. Um, it's almost like a puzzle piece, so uh, I just need to clean them off and then I'll uh, screw them together. Okay, so that's all been put together. Um, it was kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, the only issues I had were these two. The screw holes were a different diameter to the screw hole going into these bits here. Um, I didn't bother drilling them out this time. I just carry on screwing to correct the screw hole going through. So they are their type. Uh, that one's actually slightly wonky, and I just put a load of pressure down. I should probably point out what glue I'm using. Um, just using that, you know, the usual stuff that I use glue and plastic. So that's making see it's all. Probably can't. Got a nice weld line there, so actually it looks like quite authentic. So um yeah, that actually sits there, like that. And then the rest of the pack is sort of up here. So um yeah, I'll put this to one side and I'll start working on the next bit. I'm not sure if I need to actually attach this yet or I could attach it, that's really stopping me. But um, yeah, I'll start working on the next bit. Okay, so these are the next pieces I'm doing. These are the booster box. So we have booster box one and two. Um, we have the booster tubes. And we have the nipples. And I think this is the PPD. And then this goes here. This is some sort of resistor, I believe. And that goes sort of kind of on the tube here. So clean these up and then uh, put it all together. So, yeah, so those are the next bits. Okay, so that's all together. Um, I've placed that on just so I know it's a, in the right place, but. Um, also, so I don't lose a piece. Uh, you'll notice that this is grey. Um, that's because I printed this a while ago and um, I can't find the other one. So I printed a, another one of these quite quickly. So that's all together. That's all glued. That's glued on. Those glued on. As I said, that would be removed so I can uh, sand and paint it properly and then put it back on. Um, but yeah, that's that's the booster done. Um, yeah, so. Uh, Guess I'll start working on the next bit. I feel quite like this. Compared to building droids. So uh, the next bit's the power cell, and uh, it's two pieces. This should be remarkably straightforward. Um, let's quickly talk about. I mentioned this in the previous video about sacrificial. Previous video, previous part of the video about sacrificial layers, and you can kind of see how Quentin's done it. Basically, there's there's a layer that goes down to create a bridging, and then on top of that, you create the um, the actual piece you want to print. So this all gets cut away when we're when we're ready. But let's see, you sort of look underneath, you kind of see a sacrificial layer, and that basically means this entire thing can be printed without supports, which is really incredible. It saves a lot. You know, imagine trying to get support out of there because normally it's a big big block. Um, yeah, so I'm really impressed with the way he does it. So, I mean, kudos to the guy and uh, to Takabelli. That isn't his real name, I know. Um, but yeah, it's an incredibly good design. Um, and I quite enjoy this, it's, it's remarkably quick. You know, compared to building like Chopper or BB 8, this is actually just remarkably quick. It's just a case of bolting this together. Yes, I know this is the easy bit, and I still want to do all the sanding, you know, priming. Painted, I mean, it's essentially one colour, it's black, so it's not too much an issue. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, 
Yeah, so the hard bit's probably going to be the electronics inside. Um, I saw what the Nutrilla ones, all the pieces are pieces of that as well. Um, quite nicely mixed up all the pieces of this. So, as I said, uh, where, where I got that grey bit, because I've lost the other nipple, as it's called. Um, I'll probably find it again soon. Put in with all the Neutrona one bits. Anyway, I'll give this a quick clean up and then I'll put it together. And then I think we might, if that's dry so I can move it, um, put what we've got out on the table so we can see where we are. Um, there'll be one bit left, which would be the crank generator. Um, and uh, with the HGA. HGA? HPA? Um, HGA. Yeah, that'd be, the, that'd be the last main piece, I think, apart from putting the cycle on. Yeah, as I say, quite a quick build, and I'm really enjoying it. Okay, so considering that was two pieces, uh, that was actually a little more difficult than I was expecting. Um, you're supposed to put two screws in there. I can barely get one in this. Yeah, just uh, a screwdriver, I'm going to say. You can't get the screwdriver in there, there's no way I can get a screwdriver in there, there's no hole there to be able to put the screwdriver through. Um, so it's glued uh, with the EMA and screwed as far down as I could using a uh, pair of pliers. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on that one because it's probably going to be the weak point, isn't it? That's the little bit of broken off, though it's, it's fairly, the EMA is fairly strong, so it should be okay. Um, yeah, put everything else on top of that, like the primer, the paint, and it starts creating an extra, extra layers of adhesion. And I really coated it in the EMA as well when I realised that I couldn't get the the screws in. So that's that bit done. Um, I'll tidy up a bit and then let's see where we are. Yeah, let's do that. Right, so this is the proton pack so far and let's zoom out a bit. You suddenly realise how big this is. Um, yes, yeah, so these are all the pieces we've done so far. We've got the synchrotron generator pieces the uh, shell cover pieces and then we've got the booster which I've just realised I put upside down that makes more sense okay <laughs> so yeah there we go that's better yeah we've got booster and then we've got the uh, and then that what was this one power cell sorry I say I don't know a lot of the words for these ones I'm still learning them it's a lot of, it's like joy building, there's a lot of terms and lingo you have to kind of learn as you go. And then we put the cyclotron, which is probably the most recognisable part. There. So, as I said, this is a pretty simple piece, I don't need to do anything to it other than cut these sacrificial layers out when I'm ready. So that's how we're doing so far. There's just a big bit to go here, um, which will probably take the pack out to about... Um, probably just past the bottle here and out by the back of the screws. It's, it's getting big. I knew it was going to be big, it's going to be on my back. It's for a full size adult, so I knew it was getting big. It's just when you put it on the table you suddenly realise how big it's actually getting. And, oh, that's the other thing. Uh, so again, this is printed in two pieces uh, and it is, it's uh, just pushed together but it needs actually gluing. And then that bit goes there, roughly. There we go. And there's another bit that goes on there. But that's um, it's looking good, isn't it? What's it to give it a full white proton pack? So while we've got it out here like this, let's discuss um, options. Now the Q pack uh, has multiple options so you can make it look like Peter Venkman's pack, uh, Winston Zedmore's pack, Egon Spengler's or um, Ray's. Why can I not remember Ray's in their last name? <laughs> well that's bad I can't remember Ray's last name. Anyway um, that's gonna bug me now. Stance, Ray Stance, why did I not remember that? Oh god, sorry. Um, anyway, you can make it look like one of the hero packs. Um, so different uh, different pieces have different configurations. So like uh, these would be slightly different, or these are different, or um, 
there's a, a, a what they call an ugly weld here which is where they basically got a piece of metal and welded it back together to stop it breaking um, these are different um, something slightly off kilter on the other pack so that's all well and good if you wanted to replicate a particular person's pack I want a generic pack the backstory to this being this is my pack I've joined the Ghostbusters I'm a franchisee holder in the UK so Egon has very kindly made me a proton pack <coughs> pardon me, and sent it to me so there's nothing wrong with it it's not mass produced but uh, production lined so you know he's, he's, he's cranking these out to send to different people so they all look more or less identical I will then customize it in my own way by saying well actually I'm in the UK I can't get hold of certain parts because they're all US parts and back in the early 90s it was a lot harder to get hold of those sort of things so it might not be the American part so I'm half tempted not to use an LC1 pack uh, LC1 frames for the backpack but maybe use the British version because mine broke so I got one of the British version I don't know I might just get an LC1 but it's things like that just sort of trying to put a backstory behind it going well I've got to try and maintain this with tools and parts that I can only find in the UK mid mid you know, early early to mid 90s so there is no internet there is no Amazon there is no eBay none of that exists it's all postal orders or go down to your local hardware shop and you know pick up your nuclear fuel for your synchrotron generator which you often can do um, yeah that's, that's kind of the story I'm going with in the fact that it's, it's my pack so there are gonna be differences and it's gonna be more like this is the UK trying to maintain the packs you know Egon has got time to send the parts over um, yeah we're trying to work from there but yeah I'm liking this I'm liking this so, on to the next bit I think all right this is the next bit so this is the crank generator and I don't know if you look at the parts here crank generator and the gun mount box and the square to V hook. Um, so I know that I know that's the V hook. I'm, I'm sure it make I'm sure it makes sense. So yeah, these are the next bits that go together. Um, yeah, clean it up, glue it, and put it together. Right. Let's right, close that. So that's done. Um, I've, that's the wrong piece. There should be a piece that goes in that. That connects to the neutrino wand. Uh, so basically, it's the inverse shape of that goes there. I can't find it, just like I couldn't find the uh, grey nipple piece. So I don't know where that's gone. So guess what I'll be printing in the next 20 minutes. But anyway, that's done. Apart from that bit, um, that's all the big pieces done. There's the ion arm, which is here-ish. Irish. Um, yeah, that's all the main pieces now. So it's, it's coming together. It's coming together really well. Yeah. So next time you see this piece, uh, there'll be the V hook piece, uh, v square to V hook on. And that's just screwed into these two holes here. But yeah, I'm good. Right. So that's the crank generator built. Uh, put the V hook on. This is the bit I've forgotten to print, uh, or rather, I lost the print, and I went to print another, went to print that bit, and accidentally reprinted uh, that bit. So stupid me. Anyway, so printed the V hook, and this is on the neutrino wand, and it just goes on like that. Uh, there will be a bit of cleanup. Right, it's, uh, it's, it needs a bit of cleanup. Um, you can put a magnet here. Get hold of some small enough magnets and might do that, or just get hold of some really two really small, um, di small diameter magnets, so circle magnets. Just put those in there, and then that should that will try and solve that on that one. So, uh, yeah, I'm pleased with that. So, you can see it, it's a bit of an angle, so the neutrino one sort of comes down at an angle, so you can sort of hold straight on it. Yeah. So, as I said, that's the last big bit to do. 
So the next bit is um, there's the ion arm, which is sort of roughly here. Um, but I think we might just start putting some, yeah, just do a dry fit of the, of the whole pack together. I'll have to take it apart and I'm going to sand it. At least make it down to these places. We won't be able to do that if that, oh, actually. HGA needs to go there. So yeah, I'll get the HGA on and then we'll do a tri fit. Right, that's the HGA on. Um, it's not it's not glued down um, simply because I want to be able to take it back off to sand it and sand underneath and, um, and then I can glue it on right after that. Uh, so it's just been held by a screw currently. Uh, this is the ion arm and that goes on the pit side of the pack. So I think Double check the instructions. I think that's the last step. Yeah, that's that's the last step and then we can actually put the pack together. So let's do that. Right, so I'm just about to put the iron arm together and then uh, I thought I had the right diameter rod, but I don't. Um, so I guess we need to get a smaller rod. Doesn't need much. Um, I've found about up to my thumb. But I had enough, but I guess not. So anyway, put the iron on together and then we'll definitely put the, uh, the whole pack together. Iron on is done, so I'm going to start putting this together. As I said before, it's just going to be a dry fit, so it's just going to be screwed together. I'm not going to glue it because I need to be able to take it apart to sand, especially around these bits, um, to get all the little print marks. But just to sort of show what looks like it's together and to make sure that I'm on the right track, a dry fit's probably worth it doing. So next time you see it, it should be in one piece. Well, um, that was a bit of a mission. Um, yeah, something I will say about the instructions on this. Um, sorry, Quentin, but yes, you tell me what size screws to use, but what diameter of screws to use, but you don't tell me what length of screws to use, nor whether it should be a screw into the plastic or bolt it or what. It's a little confusing. Um, so, best guess in a lot of cases about what, what length of screws I've used. Also, a lot of the Places to screw the pieces together are very tight, you know, tight to the point where you're having to use you know, a, a, a drill bit, um, a screwdriver bit to get it all in. But it's together. As I said, it's dry fit, it's not been glued. Um, I've got the bumper on. The bumper itself hasn't been glued together yet, but I've got the shock mount on, and the bumper is screwed to the cyclotron. Uh, sorry, to the, to the synchrotron and it's covering the cyclotron. Um, there are other bits that need to go on here, so like there's the clip art that goes there, there's the uh, ribbon cable that comes around here. Back to there. There you go. Ribbon cable, so that will come out of here, it sort of twists around and around right here, and then I think it goes into this hole here. There's a, there's a, Oh, there, I think it goes in there. In I haven't got the picture of it completed in front of me, I've only got the instructions. But And then we need a little knob that goes there, so uh, I'm going to make that the volume control. Um, it's a spinny knob, so it's just a potentiometer. So I quite easily put a. Um, I haven't got one to hand, but I'm using a chopper. Oh, actually, no, there we go. So, now we're going to be able to see that. So that's an amplifier. So that's the volume control, so effects you have to the volume control through that hole and then put the, the, um, the real knob on top. And then I've got, well, I've got volume control, I've got to try and reach around the back to get to this, but essentially that's when we're doing it. Um, yeah, there's the ion arm, it needs to come out both sides. There's resistors, it needs to be put all over the place. There's, um, I said there's, there's a clip art, there's wires, so there's still a lot to go on. But I'm not quite pleased with it so far. I mean, it looks looks really good. It looks like a proton pack to me, and it's 
this this light ish. So, so yeah, it's not full aluminium fiberglass, so it's not going to weigh an absolute ton, but it's likewise electronics in there. It's going to start to weigh a bit, but it's definitely lighter than it would be. Um, cut the holes out and just went around with the standing knife. Yeah, there's not much else to say really at the moment. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave it here, as in the video. Um, the next step literally would be just putting in like all these extra little bits, and there's no point in doing that until it's ready to be put together properly, because um, I'll just get in the way. I mean, admittedly, everything's painted black-ish. Um, but no, it's, uh, I'm pleased with this. It's, Please with this. Um, yes, I do have the neutrino wand, as I said before, it's in the bag over there. All the, all the bits of this. All the remaining bits of this as well. Um, the other thing I'm going to put in is the infamous switch. Which is it there? I'm trying to think now on afterlife. Is it there? Is it? No, he doesn't reach that far down. It's there. The switch is there. So yeah. Put the switch on, that'll power on the pack. And that'll set the light sequences off on here and here. And then the warm-up sounds. And then the gun itself. It's not got a particle thrower. Will control what noise it makes and when. And that'll be coming out of a data cable coming out of this hole here, going it into the internal one. Battery-wise, battery's probably gonna end up being in there or here. You may even mount it further down into the cyclotron, not sure yet. Just trying to think weight wise. Do I really want it at the top of my back or the bottom of my back? As long as it equals out, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, so yeah, that's it for now. Um, I said the next step would be taking it back apart into constituent parts, yeah, the, the big main six parts, and um, sanding and priming and gap filling. I've got. You know, it's, it's like the usual sort of thing, there's gaps there, gaps around here. Um, I'll do the gap filling. So, uh, I wonder how much space I've got inside. If I just zoom up a bit. Okay. And essentially, that's the space we've got inside. So, there's plenty of room to put the electronics in. Um, see what I mean about some of the screws are a bit hard to get in. Um, but, yeah. Hitching and stick in. I can't remember what goes there. I think it's another clip. It's a resistor. Uh, oh, sorry. Zoom that down again. Yeah, I think there's a resistor that goes there. And there's one there and one there and one around here. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm not going to do a normal outro. Um, I'll do it here. So, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll pick this up again soon. See ya, bye.